In this video I'm going to look at using uh, various apps for the iPad. Uh, in particular for this one I'm going to look at Rover, but it works the same way as other ones including iSwifter, which is what it's based on, uh, Cloud Browse, Puffin. These are all uh, browsers that are designed to um, purportedly allow you to access flash content on the internet. Now as you may or may not be aware, iPads uh, do not have any support for Adobe Flash, which used to be Macromedia Flash, and there are a ton of websites out there that use this. So what Rover's description is, the reason I'm going over this one specifically is because it's designed for education. It says Rover can access Flash on your iPad. Rover can. It's a free education app that streams educational Flash content to your iPad. And you can read more about it. It's powered by the iSwifter platform, the world's first cloud-based Flash streaming platform for mobile devices. We've designed it specifically based on feedback from teachers, IT directors, and administrators from schools. So it has built-in content filtering in the cloud to prevent, uh, basically they have a filtering system on their server to prevent kids from going into inappropriate sites. No personal data is tracked or saved. A firewall friendly solution that you can set up to bypass certain ports. And easy to use and intuitive it says. So here's the claims. Um, I'm going to explain what this deal is, why it being a uh, cloud-based streaming platform is really the, the crux of the, the, the argument here. So let me explain the way that any of these uh, apps for the iPad work, any of the apps that allow you to access Flash or Java content. Uh, Flash and Java do not run on the iPad. There is no built-in support for them and you can't install them as plugins. So the way that these apps work is they contact a middleman server, a proxy server, which is a regular computer that does run Flash or Java. So the iSwifter computer will run this Flash in Java and it then takes your request for the website and contacts that website for you. And when that website returns its information to the server, it will be able to display on their screen. So what they do is they stream a video feed of whatever they're seeing for their Flash content or their Java content on their server computer and they stream that as ongoing video directly to your computer. Well, let's see why that's really an issue and why that can be a huge problem. And to do this, I'm going to use the Acer Iconia tab, which uh, there's two different versions. One has Android and one has Windows. This is the Windows version, and it's still a touchscreen interface. It works a lot like an iPad, but it runs Windows, so you get to install any programs that would normally run on Windows. So what I've done is I've set up links through Google Chrome web browser. You can use any web browser to do this. And you can set up desktop shortcuts straight to online rich internet applications. So basically it'll work the same way as an app. It's just that it's streaming through the web. So I'm going to go to the Colonial Williamsburg History.org website. You can see it's loading up. And when it gets here, let's see how much bandwidth it takes up. So I went to that website, and let's go over and look at our access manager. And you can see there was a spike here, went up to a maximum receiving rate of 948 kilobits per second. And it's, it's transferred a little bit of data here. That was all the pictures and text on the page. But then once it's done loading the page, it stops, and it's back to zero. So the total amount that was transferred here was uh, less than half a, a megabyte of data. Let me go back here to the page, and let's go to the kids section. And we'll go to the games and activities. We're on the kids zone here. And you see when it loads up the kids zone, there's a loading icon there. And we see this flash-based um, little animation here, Winter's Greetings. You can change it to other scenery and settings. There's some tools over here you can use. So this is what the website normally looks like, and here's how much data it takes up. Even with that flash-based component, it just took a little tiny bit more data there. It's still at less than 18 megabytes, and it started at about 17.6. So um, it's used still only four tenths of a megabyte to get to this web page. If we go down to the bottom, we can see there's popular games and activities. So if we go to the games and activities, you can see how quickly it loads. Again, every time I load a page, it's going to do a little tiny bump of transferring of data. And then once the page is loaded, it goes back to a flat line, which means we're not using bandwidth anymore. So as of right now, the bandwidth is not being used. There are three pages of games here for a total of 6, 12, 13. There's 13, and one of them is HodgePodge, which is actually an iPad app listed here as well. So out of 13, actually 12 games, w one of them is available as an iPad. And in the activities, we've got a page of 6 here, 12, 
16 total activities. These are more like tutorials and simulations about uh, how people would use tools or live their daily lives. For example, if we want to try uh, tool trouble, which is helping a blacksmith find his tools that he needs for his trade, we would go to it and it starts loading the page. A little bubble pops up. Welcome to the blacksmith's shop. Can you help me? Now this is flash based and you might think, oh, well, that means it takes up a lot of bandwidth and resources. But if we look over here, you'll see that it's actually not taking up anything. Uh, it's actually taking up just a little tiny bump there. So it's flatlining right now. No data is being transmitted. So if I go back over here, it says the smaller an this smaller anvil is used on smaller objects. I can go ahead and I can scroll over and find more tools. An anvil used on small objects. So I don't really know what the answer is for this. I, I'm not a blacksmith, so you would try it out and see if you can see one that looks like an anvil that would be used for something small. Let's see what this says. If we drag it up to him, found it. The, break iron, the beak iron comes in handy when I have to work on small things to work on, and it'll put them in a shop. So this is a, f a fun, interactive game to really get kids thinking about why would you use certain tools and just how many tools and devices have been invented and used, even for these sort of more primitive purposes like we used to have a couple hundred years ago. Now, if you try to access this site on Safari in the iPad, what you get is you won't be able to see this. The Flash components will not run at all. Let's take a look at what it looks like on Safari. So on the iPad, what you see, we've gone to history.org, and it looks exactly the same when you first get there. And if you see here, uh, some data spiked again, and it went up to 1,500 kilobits per second this time. But again, the web page is loaded, it comes back down, and it flatlines. So we're currently not transmitting any information, even though we're on this Colonial Williamsburg website. So we'll go to the kids page again, we'll go to the games and activities, and see what the difference is. This is on Safari on the iPad. You'll see a picture of some of the apps that are available. HodgePodge shows up. That's the only one they have available for iPad. All these other games and activities won't work. If we go back to the Tool Trouble activity that we wanted to try with the blacksmith, it says Flash Required. The Kids Zone requires the latest version of the Adobe Flash Player. Click on the link below to download the latest version from Adobe. Now, of course, you can't download this and install it because iPads do not support Adobe Flash. So that's where cloud browsing or proxy browsing like Rover comes in. So let's see how much bandwidth that took up. You see the, the, the page here, it spiked when we went to the first page, it spiked when we went to the kids activities, and then it gave a little spike of more data usage when we went to that tool trouble activity. So that means out of those 28 activities that you can't access, there's 28 games and activities on Colonial Williamsburg website that are all flash based, you can't get to them on an iPad. Obviously that's a problem for education purposes. So let's go over to our Rover app and we'll load it up. And looks pretty nice here. You can see some, some quick links to different games and things you can play. And if we go up to the Rover information, if we look at using Rover, it talks about certain security settings you might need to set and we can also look at how to use multi-touch gestures. You'll notice the first thing is the gestures that are built in are different. It doesn't let you do the swipe. In here we can, but on web pages we can't. If we want to scroll we use two fingers it says, a two finger drag, not a quick swipe to scroll up, down, left or right. Panning is a one finger drag. Drag and drop is touch with one finger to hold it down and then move it and then hover is two fingers and that's um, it's a, a mouse hover. It's like a using and putting the mouse over an object. So that's how they get around this for flash that might need to use a mouse hover. So what this is doing is we're going to it looks like a web browser, but it's actually streaming video of a server. So they make it look like a web browser, but let's go ahead and go to history.org and see what happens. and it's loading up that web page. But what it's really doing, we're not actually connecting to the Colonial Williamsburg web server. What we're connecting to is the Rover or iSwifter web server, which is then being a middleman connecting to the Colonial Williamsburg website for us. So this is not exactly uh, honest. Up at the top there, the address bar that says history.org. You can see there's an, a toolbar up at the top that's a lot like Safari. It looks like Safari, but what's actually happening to our bandwidth? Let's look at it. It's spiked up now to 1,654 kilobits per second, 
And even though the web page has stopped loading, it keeps transferring this data. Now it's transferred two megabits per second, basically. And it keeps transferring data over and over. Look at how much we've been using up. 23.6 megabytes, 23.7 megabytes, 23.8. And even though the web page is doing nothing, and it's just sitting there, it's not loading anything, but because we're connected to the rover server and it's transmitting streaming video of their screen on their computer, it's sucking up bandwidth. So if I go to the kids page now, it really doesn't matter what page you go to, any website on rover is going to do this. So if you went to just a regular website, and you can see it's kind of blocky and pixelated when we go there, let's see how the, the panning feature works. See, it's a little bit trickier here to move up and down. It's a little bit, it's a little laggy, and you can see that pixelation and that blockiness. That's because what we're seeing is not actually a website, but is a video, a big full screen video being transmitted from the rover website. So I'm going to go to the next page here. Let's try that tool trouble game again. And notice the whole time, instead of just spiking occasionally, it's using hundreds and hundreds of kilobits per second, every second, nonstop. It is now used several megabytes just to look at a couple pages, whereas before it was only a couple hundred kilobytes, less than a megabyte. And But you do see here, let's see if it works okay, I just used my two fingers to scroll, there's a delay. You do see that the flash shows up now. Before it was saying you have to install flash, now it's saying you can use it and it shows up. It's a little bit lower quality, but the biggest problem is the delay. If I press more tools, there's a delay for it to transmit that information. This tool scrapes the surface of the iron to smooth and polish it. So I don't know, maybe that's the file here. If I click and drag it, it's a little bit delayed response. But the good news is Flash is working. So why is this really a problem? Well, this isn't the ideal solution, especially not for schools, which is how they tout it being used for education. If you're at home and you have your own home network, your own home internet service provider, this will get the job done. Um, but if you're in an institution, then it's going to be really a problem because it's transmitting data nonstop. From one device, I've used up 10 megabytes now in just a couple of minutes. That's going to kill the bandwidth. That means on, uh, for example, the school I work right now, we get on a good day 5 megabits per second, and sometimes we get as low as 1 megabit per second. Well, right now it's transmitting, receiving, I should say, one, about half to one whole megabit per second. So if you had two just two programs, two iPads running Rover simultaneously, that will use up all of the bandwidth at my school's network. Um, on a good day when we get 5 megabits per second, you could use 5 times as much. That means 10 iPads would use up all of the internet transfer capability for the whole school and no other devices would be able to get on and use their computers or their iPads or any other device. So as you can see, this is really an issue. You can't even have one class or one lab of iPads running Rover at the same time or your entire network would go down. Even for a school with a lot of bandwidth, even if you had uh, 20 megabits or 30 megabits per second of I bandwidth through your ISP, you would only be able to run basically twice that many because we're getting about half a megabit per second that we're using up with this device. So basic math tells us that if we had uh, 20 megabits per second, which is a pretty good bandwidth, pretty good transfer rate, we would only be able to run 40 iPads, and that's if no other computers or devices were doing anything on the network at that time. So once we got to using about a little more than one whole class set of iPads, the whole internet would be slowed down to a crawl. And even this program will not work very well. The more devices you put on it, the less bandwidth it's going to be able to use, the slower and more choppy and blocky it's going to be. There's another problem with Rover or any of these programs, Cloud Browse, Puffin, etc. And to show you that, I'm just going to go to another website and we're going to go to this ancient Egypt. .co.uk. This is the British Museum's Ancient Egypt website. It's been around for a long time. If you look at the bottom, it says copyright 1999. So the British Museum is well known for its Egyptian exhibits and artifacts. And so we'll just go to one. Let's go ahead and try this. Uh, see, I, I clicked on it. It took a while. It was a delay. Now I've got a splash screen. This shouldn't take very long at all or very much bandwidth, but it's transmitting a lot of bandwidth that whole time. You can still see with any website you go to, it's going to do that. Even if there's no flash being run at all. This is just some words and a couple pictures, and it's still taking up to a megabit per second, and several hundred at the very least. 
So we've seen now it started at less than 25 megabytes. I've now used almost 20 megabytes in just the few minutes I've been recording this. So let's try this challenge activity down here, which it says play Senate, a popular Egyptian game. For each of these categories of Egyptian um, topics on the British Museum website, they have challenge activities in addition to a story and explore section. And notice when I'm trying to press on it, it's just highlighting it, it's doing some strange things because I'm going through the rover server. Now when we go to this challenge page, it talks about the board game Senate, and then down here it says a plugin is needed to display this content install plugin and you can see this thing up here additional plugins are required to display all the media on this page well if you try to install it it looks like you can but you can't because this is showing this is actually on the rover server it's not on the ipad you can't install missing plugins on my ipad if i press this little button here to install the missing plugin it's going to say no suitable plugins were found and you might notice also um, sometimes it'll say firefox on here which is really a big clue this is actually a Firefox web browser that's being transmitted as streaming video to our Safari browser or to not even to our Safari browser but to our rover application to our app it's encapsulating this video stream from a Firefox browser from another computer it would be a Mac or a PC that can run plugins now this one why is it not working we, we have access to Flash and Java, right? But this website uses Shockwave. Some websites, especially the older ones, Shockwave was another multimedia program plugin uh, for the web that was good for more 3D graphics and even 2D graphics. It was um, used a lot before Flash sort of took over in that department. So Shockwave is another one. Another uh, browser you wouldn't be able to use or another plugin you wouldn't be able to use would be Unity. If I go to, let's see if there's another one, architectstudio3d.com. So Architect Studio 3D is a, a 3D simulation of designing a house for a client by the Frank Lloyd Wright Preservation Trust. Very cool introduction to problem solving in the realm of architecture in this case. So it's sort of a vocational, sort of a project-based learning tool. If I go to the design studio, that's what we would use to design our building. And this says you're just one click away from using it. You need Unity. It's a free download. It's a powerful 3D engine. This is a relatively new program. This site used to use Shockwave and is now using Unity Web Browser, Unity Web Player, for doing 3D graphics. And what you do with this, you would design a floor plan, you'd pick different styles of house, and you can actually see it as a 3D model. So very cool introduction to designing houses and the process of architecture. The problem is you can't use this on the iPad, even through um, a program such as Rover or iSwifter or Cloud Browser Puffin. They're all going to do the same thing. They're going to take up a ton of bandwidth. Here we go, we see it's taken up uh, up to 700 me uh, kilobits per second so far. We've now used up 25 megabytes at least just to look at a few websites that should have taken one to two megabytes total. So if you're at home and you don't need to get to Unity or Shockwave, you just need to access Flash, especially something that's not interactive, maybe it's just a video, uh, like a flash animation, then this will get the job done if you're using it on a single iPad, on a single service provider for your internet. If you try to use this at a school, you won't be able to access Shockwave, you won't be able to access Unity, certain websites won't work, and you're, most importantly, you're really going to kill the bandwidth of your network. Most likely, if you use this on several iPads, you will see all of the machines on your internet connection stop functioning.